Hello Jim says it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today we are looking at these, which is five figures, and they are the Totem Conf division, so third. I'm not sure if they were a Panzer Grenadier division then or a Panzer division. Uh, but anyway, we're looking at uh, Totem Conf division, uh, Kharkov 1943. Uh, I've always uh, no matter the subject, uh, let's get out there now. I don't lean towards uh, the far right or anything like that. I paint history, I build history through model kits. That's it. Uh, but I've always had an interest in Third Kharkov, which was a winter stroke into March uh, battle. Uh, I've always liked the, from a painting perspective, as I say, take away all the, all the heinous stuff around uh, token comp division whatever uh, I've, I've always liked this look of the the parkers and stuff like that and the battle itself uh, and I've, all, I've got uh, an intent to get a, uh, a small yeah, again here we go <laughs> Gavin is small dioramas that either shrink to nothing or or just don't uh, evolve into anything but I've got a plan I've got a uh, Tamiya half track coming, uh, one of the really old ones, uh, on a budget, and uh, uh, I intend to not fill it up with these figures particularly. I've got one resin figure, and this is the whole. Let me. Can we? Yeah, we can. It's all dusty the box, but the figure's actually been primed for four months. I've got one of these Panzer art. I showed him a year ago or more. Well, he is primed and stuck on a concrete bung, bung weight concrete. No, cork bung waiting to be painted and I just couldn't get in my head what I was going to do with this one figure as I seem to remember at the time saying oh it's just going to be rubble figure uh, never ends up then I was starting to think maybe a Zundat motorbike or a or a, a BMW motorbike that they do you know uh, with a sidecar or just you know as if some some headquarters just just some bit of something with the figure rather than just a pile of rubble and then that I thought, no, nah. Kubelwagen, Schwimmwagen, no. Nah. Uh, and I'd, I've always wanted to build one of the, uh, the I like the half tracks, you know, whether they're the, the Hanamag types or whether they're the, the American uh, M3, the whites and the internationals, are they? Uh, anyway, I looked at the, I kept looking and looking and uh, I finally decided I was going to do a half track. I wasn't going to do AF. V Club, they're, they're in the high 30s, ain't money, £35 or, and there's supposed to be fit issues with them so I'm thinking no, I'm quite happy to scratch build and all the rest of it but I don't want something that's going to take me forever to do and, and not look right in my head if I'm, you know, when, it, when it's built. So I looked at the Tamiya ones, they're ancient uh, but I've bought some plastic tracks from Hobby Boss I believe, I know, and from what the box says you don't, or from the real, because I was looking at reviews on everything. Uh, they said uh, you only get this the, the exact amount of tracks, one stuff up. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, the way I haven't got that yet. I mean, it's supposed to come today, tomorrow, whatever. But uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that'll be another unboxing. Yes, I know it's been around since the nineteen seventies or eighties, but uh, I just thought with that, as a reviewer said, it looks like a, a SDK of say two five one. Uh, and I thought, well, if there's any little bits of scratching to do in the middle, uh, middle, inside, I can do that. I'd just like to say, I got this idea of that from watching Andrew's uh, builds. And he's got a, is it a Vesp or a Hummel? Nash horn? I can't remember now, Andy, which one it is. <laughs> but... I like the look of his interior as it is and that, you know, put a bit in and, and obviously the bits from the kit and stuff. And I just thought, yeah, you know, because there's not a lot of lot to do in, in this. So I thought, yeah, we'll park that up. We'll have said figure eating his bread or his cheese, whatever he's doing with that. And then we can add at least one more figure uh, or maybe two. I looked at resin figures and the price of them now. I mean, we're talking with the postage for a single figure, 14 to 15 pound. I mean, that's a lot of dough. I mean, these guys that... Uh, I guess I could go to China and get the same figures that they've stolen, you know, off these companies, and I'm not doing it. 
I'll refuse it. Yeah, and I can get them for three pound fifty. There's a bloke. There's a bloke in the UK. I'm not even sure if he's not Birmingham. So I've seen him on eBay. He should be ashamed of himself uh, because they're they're knockoffs. You know, as they say, no bag, no box. That tells you something for a start. Uh, and they're exactly the same. I know what figures they're from because I've, obviously I look at figures all the time. Uh, anyway, I digress. So yeah, I, I thought it's got to be plastic figures. Uh, at the moment, it was I was struggling to. I wanted Karkov Parker uh, figures, and although there's a lot that come up when you actually go to buy them, they're all sold out. Anyway, uh, a, a guy's shop that I go to a lot is uh, can't read that probably. Dave Coley. You go, it's, I must have about 10 of these now. <laughs> uh, he flattens the boxes down uh, and then he'll put the, he puts them in a box, flattens the boxes down, takes the sprues out. I don't do it on the models, uh, but on the figures he seems to. Uh, I don't know if I bought a model off him. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't have a problem with that. The box, he's not broke, the box just goes back together again. Um, but it just makes it easier to get through people's letter boxes. Uh, but yeah, um, bought this off Dave Coley. Uh, there was two types. One was out of stock, which was the cheaper one. I think you can get this. This box is the resin head version, which uh, I, I wasn't one way or the other, to be honest with you. Uh, the normal plastics got the normal plastic heads and plastic sprues in this box as well. The only difference with this is it has got uh, you know a little row of resin heads, five resin heads. Um, this was about thirteen pound. Oh, I'll be lying if I I can't tell you the exact one. About thirteen pound cost me three pound fifty in postage. Uh, you can get he he was selling them if he'd had them in stock. The same ones without the resin heads for nine pound plus about three pound fifty postage. Uh, but if you shop around, you, you'll find them. Uh, I haven't. I've literally before I start painting again on doing commission work. I just want to get this video out there. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking at the figures. Uh, Probably use the one figure standing up. Uh, I might put another figure sat on rubble. Uh, I don't particularly want to crew the the half track particularly. Uh, we'll see. I don't know if you can. I doubt. I don't know if the Tamiya one you can open the doors on the back or not. We'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the idea. Little. Uh, I've always been interested uh, on in the east Kharkov, uh, which by the way was just before. Obviously, running out of steam in March when when the Germans retook it, uh, and then you had the, the obviously the big battle of Kursk in the summer. Was it August? You know, going into September, uh, but uh, yeah, um, but this they always said this was the last battle in the East that the Germans won, and some say no, it wasn't really a victory. Some say it was, uh, whatever. But uh, that I was like uh, the Kurland uh, pocket up uh, up up. There, <laughs> and the final days of the first one. If we're talking east, this is along the Elbe, you know, and and you know Breslau and Kustrin and all those places. Right, let's go down and have a look at these figures. <laughs> I can't ever just do a do one of these videos without talking too much. Right, guys, sorry for the glare on the box, uh, but that's our box. These are our figures. Uh, sometimes they don't always match, obviously, the uh, what you get. I don't mean massively imposes, but occasionally they don't. Uh, what I do find with the mini art that I mean, I'm doing some mini art for Jason over model kit stuff at the moment, and uh, just as a hobby, uh, he's doing a tiger build, as you all know, or he will be doing one, and I'm just trying to get these figures done and and out to him. Uh, so. Uh, he knows he's got him and he can do his diorama but I think it was Corey was saying when he did his, his American World War II soldiers they're not massively great fitting together um, and you will probably need to do a fair bit of filling on them but when they are filled uh, there's no problem um, as I say I probably wouldn't be sticking these down or if I do, it'll be something light tack that I can just take off because I reuse all my figures at some point. They're all sometimes I give them away to people, and other times I'll uh, I'll wrap them up, you know, and uh, and use them for a later project. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, let's have a look at the, the figures themselves. Right, no particular order, uh, just as I, I happen to have them uh, to hand. Uh, the one thing I, I do like about the mini art, uh, I'm not a huge fan of how they put they they fit together, um, but I do believe that they're their sculpting's great and the detail is is often very very crisp. Uh, we've got the respirator canisters there, so gas mask canisters, and as usual, I don't have a stick to. Oh, let's use this one. Bit mucky, but yeah, we've even got our, you know, our little leather handles, well, not handles, but you know, straps to hold down the the respirator lid. Uh, we've got a drinking canteen, obviously. Uh, mess tins. Now I, I usually scuff those up a fair bit when I do do them. Because uh, although they were painted, they obviously didn't take long to get them chipped off. Uh, we've got a canteen with the actual uh, drinking cup on the top. Entrenching tools. Again, nice and crisp. You're going to get mould lines on them. We've got a we've got a entrenching tool without a cover on there. Either oh, could be, you could, well, I don't know if you could get away with being it shoved in somebody's belt, uh, but often they'd carry the entrenching tool uh, for combat. Now it, it would appear we've got helmet wise when you can see them, sorry about that. Obviously with it you're going to have to clean up the top of the helmet. Uh, I don't know if that if, if Shame, maybe if they could have been done on the edge, inside edge, maybe. But never mind. But they are crisp. And they're the later type, I think, with the uh, the more curved, the the lesser ridge to the front. It looks like we've got a couple of helmet covers because you can see that they've gone over the uh, the securing nuts on the front. Rivets, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, a couple of couple of covers there. Again, you have to get rid of the mould lines and, as I say, the nice big sprue attachment point there, which will be interesting to see if that leaves a a mark when you've when you've done it. But we'll see. We've got our bread bag. Again, they've done a bit of as if there's something in it, which is good. Uh, I wasn't sure if that was uh, by no covers or if it or not, but or is that just uh, one of the tops to one of the drinking? I'm not sure. Could be actually to the top of the drink uh, canteen. And we've got some bayonets. Bit of mould line around the top by the look of them, but but nothing, nothing horrendous. It can't be taken care of with a scalpel. A bit of sandpaper. Um, we've got some nicely moulded uh, MP40s. Car 98s, by the look of them. Uh, no slings, so if you want slings, you're going to have to uh, put them on yourself. I might attempt to do that if I. It depends what figure I've, I'm using. Uh, ammo clip pouches. Take it, that's for the MG ammo, MP40 pouches, looks like a of pistols, flare pistols, uh, the little uh, torches, that little torch, you know, those hand old clicker things that they had. We've got one there with the flap open. Take it so you can put a pistol in your hand, in his hand. Take it, that's for the butt of the MP40. Yeah, that little hole there goes there. 
So yeah, that's that one, all nicely moulded. We've got a nice MG42, that's very crisp, I like that. Again we've got a ammunition uh, cans there. You can either have your bipod ex you know, extended out or in. It looks like we've got the spare barrel for the MG. And we've got ourselves a, a, link, a load of linked ammo that, you know, I don't know if, you could, if you've got warm water or something or a hairdryer, you can maybe, uh, you know, make that so it, uh, it's, it's not obviously just a straight line. Yeah, I thought it was. That's so obviously the if you want to put the drum magazine on the on the machine gun. So that's that. Uh, it looks well. It's not a double sprue because we haven't got the machine gun, but uh, more MP40s and rifles. Very crisp. Now we get into the actual figures themselves. Let's have a look at the, the fur on the Parker. A bit soft, but it's it's not too bad. I've seen paint those different. I've seen so many different colours of fur that they add on them. Um, look like the gaiters over the boots there. Looks like gloved hands. Not too bad, obviously flash round them, but that's not going to be hard to get rid of. Soft on the belt buckle, I think, detail wise, but you know what it's there. The straps again look slightly soft, maybe, but that's your plastic for you uh, compared to resin. You know, you don't get such sharper edges a lot of the times. found that with the uh, the figures I'm doing braces which aren't obviously braces that hold trousers up aren't particularly uh, you know thick anyway but uh, I'm finding that on the ones I'm doing for Jason you know that they, they, they you'd having to black line them just to get to stand out more uh, we've got another fur, furry Parker hood there I say it's not too it's, it's a bit soft but it's plastic you know I'm not well, you can't expect the absolute crispness of resin uh, there has to be you know if you if you if you're paying your nine pound or your fourteen pound for four figures uh, there's a trade off you know that just is compared to resin let's have a look at the plastic faces now the faces I'm painting for Jason I actually thought were the best probably the best part of the figures um I thought the, the, apart from you know the ears were, were missing a bit of detail but where are we Gav? Looks like some right bruises these blokes. <laughs> like some right gargoyles. Yeah, definitely some bruises in amongst these. And let's have a look at the, the resin head. Sorry, I didn't think to take this out of the bag first, so I apologise for any noise. Right. Let's see how crisp these resin heads are compared to the plastic ones. 
and they are crisper aren't they and there is a bit of difference they almost look those bruises almost looked all the same I mean if you're in Kharkov December 1943 or sorry you know December January February March whenever it's cold you haven't had much sleep people are trying to kill you you're not going to look the most happiest person in the world uh, so I think on the face of it yes I think I would probably if they gave you the option of all on all their figure boxes and I don't know if they do to have resin heads uh, at least faces you know um, I'd probably go with it for the sake of the extra three four quid uh, I, you know more or less paying like a pound a face or whatever uh, it really is up to you you know if you think it's worth it or not um, but looking at those those compared to let's go and get one of the plastic faces again let's have this quickly have this bloke here I mean that's not rubbish face but obviously it's going to be a bit softer because it's plastic and these are just a bit sharper because they're resin so yeah I'd, I'd probably say go for myself my own personal point of view um, you know uh, go resin and these guys have got the balaclavas scarf wrapped around their heads I just wanted to show you a couple of reference books I bought um, for this project and I was interested in it anyway but quickly I was really impressed with this one it's from the Histoire collection can we get that out Gav? Uh, the Histoire collection uh, they do all all uniforms and and now they've got these like these battle uh, what do they call them? series? men and battles and they do everything inside they've got uh, an inside sleeve and it shows you Napoleonic uh, battles and what they do, I'd imagine for those ones as well, and they've got ancient, they've got like Elysium, not Elysium, what is it, Elysium, uh, with the Gauls. Anyway, Caesar and the Gauls and, and you know, you name it, they, they're doing them by the look of it. And there's some other World War II ones. Um, this is a famous photograph. As a youngster of about 12, 13, this is what got me into Kharkov um, in the, the, the third battle. Uh, it was just like... Survive, there's been a load of these photographs that survived um, it happens to be on, on Totem Conf you can tell Totem Conf because they don't wear the SS ruins on the on the collar they wear a death's head um, as I say I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a propagandist or anything like that it's just history I just enjoy painting it but I it, it was this and a series of photographs I've got in a book I don't know if it's one of Bruce Corey's books I'm not sure uh, but it really that they were really clear photographs and uh, I mean this looks less clear because they've colorized it but they've got the same photograph blown up in the in the book but what I liked about this book is not only will you get this doesn't this isn't just following it from the German perspective uh, there are that both sides are, are shown uh, and they show uh, color like color artwork of the T-34s um, uh, T-70s is it the light ones the light tanks uh, obviously Mark III Panzers Mark IVs uh, Tigers uh, they've even got Sturmoviks and and, and Messerschmitt 109s in profile like you know in, uh, I don't want to open it up because of, because of copyright but there's uh, some colour maps in there as well uh, they've even got uh, a couple of each side represented um, reenactors or whatever addressed as in the period type of uniforms you know so they've got a couple of soviet infantrymen uh showing different weapons and, and different quilted jackets and that and they've got a couple of uh waffen ss blokes it was by the way the here the army and the luftwaffe uh, as in ground as well they all they all participated in kharkov it's just that there were so many photographs taken of the the waffen ss corps there which was uh which was the the liebstandarte uh Das Reich and Totenkopf. Totenkopf were refitting. They came out of Russia last, and they were still refitting when they were ordered back to Kharkov. Um, obviously, the Russians or Soviets had uh, taken Stalingrad, and they were on the rampage. 
and although a lot of Stalin's generals were obviously he didn't he didn't front up to Stalin too much, but you know they were very queasy. Some of them about pushing forward uh, because their tanks were worn out, and uh, you know obviously Van uh, Manstein uh, caught them uh, caught them on a on you know, with a counter offensive. Um, but yeah, very interesting battle and uh, something that uh, I've always been interested in. Now, what reason I'm showing this as well is, uh, and these are the type of things you get inside. Uh, these are Italian troops being given a lift on a stug uh, as they retreated out of uh, the Stalingrad, uh, those that managed to get out of the Stalingrad sector. Uh, what uh, I enjoyed about uh, this book was the price as well. <laughs> uh, I got this from World of Books. Now, World of Books are great for second-hand uh, books, uh, very cheap. Uh, the, the one drawback you'll get from them is they send all their books out in plastic heat wrapped, you know, shrunk, whatever they call them, you know, where they heat seal them, that's the word I was after. And this book hadn't got a blemish on it. It still hasn't, but it, it could have come in bent, speared through, whatever, because there's no protection for it whatsoever. And I, I, it really annoys me. I collect military books and, you know, some new, some second hand. I never pay a lot for them because I don't have a lot of money, but I think this was about four or five pound and that included the postage. I mean, you can't go wrong. Uh, in fact, I'll open it up, unless I don't think this is breaking copyright because I'm actually showing you what other books they've got. But that's the type of stuff you get. Uh, out of this series and I would imagine it will run to the same thing um, so if you've got uh, Alicia that's it um, Bull Run, first Bull Run anyway Hattin in 1187 uh, and then of course you've got uh, uh, Normandy 44 you've got Operation Goodwood, Operation Total Eyes you've got Fontenoy you know it's uh, and they've got Coming Soon it says or Roy Qua, oh that would be a good one, 1643 I like that uh, um, Huey, Huey, they've got the Battle of Huey coming. Now they say it's coming, I don't know how old this book is actually, but uh, they might already be out. Um, but yeah, and if you're into Napoleon, it's the Battle of Leipzig. So yeah, uh, try eBay, uh, because World of Books put a lot of their stuff up on there, but if you, if you, if you can't, if you don't think it, it just goes directly to their website. Uh, they'll still do you the free postage and all that type of stuff. I know, yeah, it's built into the cost, but if you're buying a book at £4, there's no way that you would have bought this book from a, a new bookseller at £4 or £5 or £6. You know what I mean? It's no way. And the other one I've got is a 2001. Now, this is on the uh, Token Conf division. As again, I hold no, uh, no leanings that way. Uh, I just enjoy my history. I've got as much stuff and say Israeli armour and stuff as I have got. Uh, and I've got as much stuff on, on Soviet stuff as well, so I don't lean any particular way. I just enjoy military history and particular aspects of it. Uh, as I say, I make no, as this guy who wrote this book, Dr. Chris Mann, he makes, he pulls no punches on, on uh, the Totenkampf uh, or any other waffen SS division. You know, um, he tells it like it is. Uh, but if you're interested in these, if you enjoy the vehicles, the the uniforms, uh, you know, the general history. Uh, I got this at the moment. There are different sellers. I saw one ex library copy for one pound eighty, um, and they wanted about three pound on three fifty. Uh, this in the UK postage. Now that. Uh, as a ex library book, yeah, I mean, you put, get what you pay for, don't you? I've bought a couple of ex library books, and to be honest with you, they're not they're not really worth it because they really have been well thumbed and knocked about by the time you get them. Uh, I was praying that this, I got this I, I, from World of Books uh, direct, as in rather than through eBay, and um, I was hoping it was. They didn't say library book, ex library book, which normally all the sellers will say. And they hadn't, so I took a chance, and it, it came up great. I say 2001, this was uh, out. I'm not going to open it again because of copyright, but just those two photographs will tell you all the type of stuff that's in, in the middle of it. Uh, a detailed examination of the men, equipment, organisation, combat record of the SS Totenkampf, one of the most infamous divisions of the Waffen-SS. 
includes rare photographs of the division and its key figures from its formation, from concentration camp guards, its training and the subsequent campaigns in France and the Eastern Front. Authorities text is accompanied by maps, organisation charts for easy reference. Uh, and I've only had to skim through first of all and I, I, I was very impressed in how they've set it out. So that, uh, and again I've got it mainly for Kharkov and uh, later for uh, trying to relieve Budapest. Um, no particular things I wanted to check out on there. And again, this was £4 free delivery. It's a hardback, this one. It's probably got more, there's a bit of usual shelf wear on it, but and it probably got more knocked about again in its plastic bag uh, than, than it didn't, than it has been on somebody's shelf who's looked after it. Because uh, at the end of the day, we're just custodians of books, I always say. <laughs> you know, I've got a huge collection. Um, when I pop my clogs, they're just rubbish to other people, you know. Uh, so they'll get they'll they'll go to one of these these booksellers, uh, and then hopefully you know somebody else. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd show those because as I say, I'm using them for reference. I'm using them for reference for for the upcoming project. Uh, I've also got another one coming for four pound, uh, which I did get off an eBay seller, and that was uh, on half tracks and wheeled vehicles. Uh, the you know on for the German army and, and Waffen SS whatever Luftwaffe um, you know so because I, I I don't know it really that much about um, German half tracks I know they came in the long version and the short version was it the two five two and I, well, we all know the different you know pioneer versions and and the uh, Nebelwerfer type uh, launchers and and the the Pack forties and all that type of stuff I know roughly what I'm looking at there but. I could hardly tell you what particular marks, you know, what road wheel had four bolts and what had six. So look after yourselves, guys. Again, huge, huge uh, ramble for an unboxing, I know, it's, but it's just what Cav does. Uh, look after yourselves. Uh, there will be an up and coming video when it ever gets here of my uh, half track. Uh, yes, you've seen them all a million times over, but hey, it's one of Gav's videos. Uh, and it, it'll just lead through onto the project when I, when I finally get there. Figures will be the last thing I do because as I say, I'm doing Jason's figures uh, and this is all in my own time, not in my commission time, so I'll my commission painting time. So I'm still just doing the finishing touches on the Sherman at the moment. Uh, I've said to myself that uh, I'll give you a, a look at that before I make a very small base for it and then I'll make a base for it uh, and then that's out of the way and then we'll get on with the, uh, with the half track. Uh, and in the middle of all that, do an airplane as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look after yourselves, guys. I'm rambling. <laughs> oh, good. They never change my videos. Uh, up and coming videos, just so you know, we've got the couple of figures that I've painted for Jason almost done. I've got uh, the second one's still got a bit of work to do on him, but he's almost done. Uh, Jason, if you ever see this video, I sent you an email. I don't know if it's with some photographs in. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, anything else? Um, no, I believe that's it for today. As I say, we'll, we'll do an unboxing of the half track and the tracks when I get them. Uh, I've got a Napoleonic 80mm Grenadier battalion to show you, but probably now not till the early part of next week by the time it's finally based. Uh, look after yourselves. We'll catch each other very soon on another video.